This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're, of course, a person. And what about me? That's a good point. Um, I'm obviously sitting here with Courtney Parchman, average fashion blogger, perfect person of the week. And um, Courtney, I usually start with a perfect thing I've done. And I've been wiping my dashboard with a microfiber cloth. My, what, with a what? With a mic. <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, I've been wiping my um, <laughs> dashboard in my car with a microfiber cloth. Cloth. I thought you were saying cloth. Have you seen the, the silly putty ones where you put it in and you pull it out of the... Out of like the cup holders? Cup holders? <laughs> I have not. Okay. Is that sort of to get what? Dirt and gunk and grime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get really. So yeah. impressed with your microfiber cloth, however, could always improve. I could. <laughs> and by the way, being perfect means you could always improve. Being perfect means that you know you're not quite there yet. You're not quite there yet. And it, you could always get a little bit better. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Um, My perfect thing I did this week? Oh, well, yeah. Well, I was about to ask you. I love that you teamed up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you sort of, you sort of were gearing up to share it. I know you asked that just so that um, I would share mine. Well, yeah, I was <laughs> I was about to ask you though. I didn't expect that it wasn't like a cute sheet. I wasn't sort of expecting like, okay, and Courtney. And my turn. And, my, and I actually did this thing this week. And actually I've been perfect this week. Um, yeah. What makes you perfect to be on the show today to answer these people's questions? Obviously um, they know you from your work as a social oh, media icon and star from being on Murderville, et cetera. Yes. But what makes you specifically a perfect person today on the show? Today I'm a perfect person because I know that these jeans don't fit me that well and, and they, I hate how they fit me. I hate how I look in them. I think I look terrible in them. However, when I was getting dressed today, I was like, just wear them, get over it and yeah. wear them. Yeah. And I'm actually a perfect person because I'm wearing these jeans. And by the way, I just have to say, when you pulled up, you got oh. out of the car and I came over to greet you and you were putting your shoes on and you were struggling and you said, you're not supposed to see this part. <laughs> well, he was waiting for me like as I pulled up to the car, which is like such a personal violation. <laughs> like... <laughs> like, I was a pervert on the street. Yeah, I was like, what is he? I still need like five seconds. <laughs> Honestly, can I be honest? I was around the bush. I was hiding around the bush so that you could have your time to get out of your car <laughs> on your own time. And then I heard your door open and I was like, yeah. okay, she's done having her personal moment and she's ready to come out of the car and uh -huh. into this world. And that's when I sort of emerged around the bush, around the bush. to say, hi, so good to see you. Yeah. And you were putting your shoes on. So I was I putting my shoes you. on and also um, there was a beautiful parking spot right in front of this studio. Yeah. So it was inevitable. Like we were staring at each other. Mm -hmm. I, you knew you, you could probably hear my car hitting all the bushes. As I, I was, did sort of see the squeak. Yeah, the squeak, the squelch of well, the bush. There's a tree that should be trimmed. Stadia, I'm kidding. I would. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tree that needs to be trimmed. Let's face what's going on. The gardener should be coming any. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we really. Like, he has not been doing. Oh this. really? No, I don't, well, I don't live here. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I just use the studio to make magic to make art. I don't know how you're talking and hearing myself. Yeah, I know. It's just something I've done it so many. I've probably done it. I don't know. Uh, a thousand times. That's like true. I've yeah. done it so many times because I was a podcast producer also. Yeah. So I was doing like all the recordings. So now I can't do it without. Oh, that's interesting. Let me try it. Hey. Hey. See, it feels like I'm not. Even, it feels like I'm being silent. Is, <laughs> it feels like you're being silenced. <laughs> it feels like I'm being silenced as a person on this planet. For my amazing ideas. I do think your value as a podcaster does go down if you're not wearing headphones. I think so. People look at you and go, amateur hour. They're saying they're just talking. Is this even a podcast? Yeah, this isn't even a podcast. Have, but now they're thinking, this guy's smart. He has something to say smart. They're saying this girl doesn't know what the hell she's doing. Literally whatever about her. She doesn't yeah. wear headphones. She doesn't give a shit. Oh, let me try it. Well, you're going to have to wear them at some point because you're going to have to see or hear the callers. Yeah, the calls. Can you just translate it to me? <laughs> <laughs> it just relay the information. Spark Those couldn't be on more bad. Those are... <laughs> there, we go, there, we go, there we go. Now they're starting to go on. Do you wear headphones in real life, Courtney? No, no, I can't even wear AirPods because I lost them too many times. I wear the oh, plug-in ones. Yeah, there we go. Honestly, can I just say? I look better with them on. You do look like a podcaster with them on. Have you ever thought about yeah. starting a podcast? You're sort of a fun, spunky internet personality. No, because, oh my God. Hello, <laughs> girl. Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> Who's talking? <laughs> 
Um, no, because like I don't want people to know me. And everyone has a. I'm sorry, I know your podcaster, and I was watching yours, and I was no, laughing. No, no. I love trash them. the industry, trash the industry. <laughs> Everyone's talking, and I'm like, I don't have anything of value to add to these conversations. Yeah, Courtney, as you're saying it, people are unlistening to the podcast. They're thinking, neither like, does this what? guy. He doesn't have anything fucking <laughs> to say. Well, this is one of the reasons why we take calls because I also felt yes. like I was like, well. I don't know what I'm going to say every single week. Like, I feel like I will run out of stuff to say. Also, I'm on another podcast called The Tripod, where it's like a chat show that's all of us. I yeah. do an episode for Patreon. It's so much stuff that I'm yeah. talking about all the time. So I was like, well, if I can talk to people on the phone, then it'll feel fresh. That's so nice, too. And you're hearing other people's situations and putting yourself in their shoes. That's great. I thought about if I was to do one, I would bring on like experts of like random, like mm. someone that can read dog language. I and I kind of want to start Dang. a podcast just so I can talk to someone. Speak to me more about dog language, about dog language. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar? I'm not. I'm certainly not. <laughs> like I want language some... because dogs actually have a written language. Yes, and I do know there's <laughs> someone out there that probably can like look at a dog and know what they're communicating. And I'm not talking about like a medium. Oh my god, have you seen that? By the way, I did take pre workout. It's <laughs> not what you think. <laughs> Yeah, Courtney took pre workout right before this. Yeah, was, is, do you feel jazzed up? I feel insane. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done a podcast in a while, and um, I'm remembering that. Oh, between, what was the last podcast you did? And then how does it relate to now? I mean, we've only been the show for at this point a little bit. Oh, do you know Blake Ross here? His wasn't even in a podcast. He's a comedian. He did this thing. It was called. He had to stop it because um, there was like it was too real. Violent vi uh, violence. Like YouTube what? was flagging it as violence. It wasn't violence. It was funny. You like sit in the back of a a moving truck, a moving van while they're driving it, and he just like talks to you and asks you questions. And that was fun because like there was so much going on. Yeah, that's but that really was fun. maybe like six months ago. I forgot what we were talking about before this. So your pre workout. Oh, it was dog language. <laughs> That's what it was the conversation. Danguage. Danguage. And you'd like to talk to an expert. Sorry, to be clear. You to talk, you'd like to talk to a danguage expert who is just sort of like, man, I'd love that though. So you're saying you don't want a podcast. I would listen to a podcast of you being like, so talk to me about what a dog say. Like, well, I'm, I'm sure that they're like, hey, if you see a dog and they're prancing um, and their, their tails like in this rhythm, that actually means this. Well, first of all, Courtney, uh, I've got a couple of things I just want to sort of get your gut check on okay. as a perfect person on the show today. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to list them and just be like, okay, perfect this. And you're going to answer them. Okay. Perfect shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, Orbe. This is where you just list your sponsors. <laughs> Orbe, you can get 10% off. If With you my code. <laughs> no, I actually have tried to get them. They follow me and they watch my stories, but I like did a whole thing on them naturally because I was stealing all my roommates during quarantine. Mm. And then I went to go buy her more because she went home. And she um, and I was like, hey, I've been using your shampoo and conditioner. I'm going to buy you more before you come back. Mm. Found out it was $140 a bottle. That's insane. Yeah, at the time that was, like, I couldn't do it. So I posted a story, I was like, crying. I was like being so obnoxious. I was like, Orbit, please. Not actually thinking they would send me anything. Yeah, right. And then they reached out and they were like, we'll send you, but like, this is so funny. Can we send you something? I was like, oh my God, please. <laughs> thinking they were going to do the bottles. But yeah. then they sent like- Ugh, mini bottles. The little mini ones. Come on, Orbe. Um, But that was sweet. That was sweet of them. That's really sweet. <laughs> What's the perfect snack to have? Seaweed. Okay, talk yes. to me about seaweed because what are we talking about here? I've tried it. I've tried to get in there. You don't like it? I. It's not that I don't like the flavor. It's just that I feel like I'm having to, if I want to satiate my snack hunger, yeah. I need to eat like 14 boxes of seaweed. It's too light. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely issues with it. Um, I think the main issue with it is that it's so crumbly. It gets everywhere. It's kind of like those mm -hmm. granola bars that get everywhere. But yeah. I don't know why I like it because it you put it in your mouth and then it starts to get um, soggy immediately, like almost like a Listerine strip on your tongue. <laughs> it's like, yeah. There's so many different ways to eat it. I always was a one strip kind of girl, but then one time I was nannying these kids and they had seaweeds and seaweed things and they were eating it mm -hmm. full stack at a time. Never even thought to do it as a tiramisu. Sandwich style? Tiramisu style? Uh, layered. Wow. Yeah. Um, there's many different flavors. Can you answer this too? What would you say? Well, seaweed honestly is not bad. Recently, I've been getting into the rice mochi nuggets from Trader Joe. Yes. Those are really good. I don't like those because I can't stop. Yeah, no, I'll eat the whole bag. That's and also I my problem. really like the texture of it. 
Yeah, the texture is really good. It's nice. Again, seaweed, I'm not opposed to. I just feel like I'm having to eat so much. I'm slicing open those little packages. And, and there's, the packaging is horrible. That's terrible. It makes it, no sense. Big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take out a full page Facebook ad. Courtney Parchman on seaweed. The packaging is too big. <laughs> too big. Too big. And it's you doing this. It's you holding your Too hands. big. The thing with the rice mochi nuggets, you're not going to like them at first. I don't know if you had this experience with them. You have to kind of go over the hump. Yeah. I, it took me about six to seven because I was doing this thing mm. where once a week I would go to Trader Joe's and try one new thing from there that I haven't tried. Just making life your tapestry. Just sort of. What the hell else am I going to do on a you're Sunday? You're soaking it up. <laughs> I, would, DM, baby. I would stroll it. No one would know what I'm doing. I'm strolling and be like, this is it. They don't know that I'm about to try a snack that I haven't had before. <laughs> they don't know that this is the best day of my life. Um, the, and so I had those. And um, since they were my one snack that I picked of the week, I had to keep eating it. And I ended up liking them, but I didn't at first. You had to go through. You just sort of push through where no one had gone before. Was yours an immediate... I had an immediate love for them, yes. I sort of... Hey, everyone has their own journey I know, with them. I just, I had an immediate... And I don't like the little ones. I like the big ones. There's, okay. They sell tiny ones for salads. I don't recommend those. I think they're too much like kernels of popcorn. Okay. Perfect first date to have. I like a little wine bar. I love... By the way, I'm trying to get into wine. Yeah. It's, I'm into natural wine right now, which is sort of only because I think it's cool to do and mm -hmm. not because I like it more than other wine. Um, well, Courtney... Um, the phone's are ringing off the dang hook and we've got to get to these callers here. But before we do, people need to know if they like the show, then they can rate or subscribe it on any podcast platform that they listen to so they don't miss an episode. And it's me in your inbox saying, hey, there's a new FB. And if you love this show and you can't get enough, then you can't. Now you can actually by joining the Patreon and listening oh, to the yeah, ad free yeah, yeah. extended episodes of every single episode. That's right, baby. And then also bonus episodes on Friday where I call back people from the show to get their updates on how my advice changed their lives. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I'm going to give you two options here. Option one, it's a workplace dispute where she threw away someone's mug. Option two, there's a weed. Somebody stole my weed. I'm going to do option one only because mm. I can't smoke weed. And so I don't know about weed culture. I go crazy. Um, you go sicko mode. Yeah, it's like not fun. Yeah, no, like, I don't blame you. I'm on psychedelics when I do it. So scary. Yeah, so I like don't eat. I don't really know about it. You don't know about smoking doobies? Shit. I <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, whoa. Okay. <laughs> I'm you fucked. stepped into the culture. You stepped right into the culture, Courtney. <laughs> All right. Hi, Miles. My petty inconsequential real problem is that I threw out uh, someone's mug at work and it had only been in our kitchen for like two days. And then the person came to me and asked about it and I lied right to their face because it was early in the morning. But the problem is mm. there was a witness to me throwing it out. <sighs> mm -hmm. mm. Help. <laughs> I don't know what that <laughs> moo was at the end, but we've got to talk to this person and help them solve their conundrum. Yogurt and granola, peanut butter and jam. These are iconic duos, but what about an iconic duo that's about you and growing your business? That's you? and Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling turtles, or <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered, even if it's turtles or BB&J sandwiches. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with their internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. As an entrepreneur, I wanna make sure that I'm setting myself up for success, if it's a little bit of success right now as a small business, all the way up to when it's a mega success, when I'm basically one of the biggest companies in the entire world, selling turtles to every man, woman, and child on the planet. Shopify skills with you as you go, so you're prepared for little growth and you're prepared for big growth along the way. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash perfect person, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash perfect person now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com 
patreon.com slash perfect person. Hello? Hello, you called perfect person and I'm here to call you back. I'm here with Courtney Parchman. Hello. Oh my gosh. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi, little, hi, little mug thief. You little mug thief. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty little mug thief. Dude, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to need a fake name for you. Uh, Courtney, can I have a fake name, please? Um, Clarissa. Clarissa. Why don't you tell me what's been going on at work and also what type of job you work? So I'm a receptionist at like a professional services firm. I don't want to get too specific you know, just in case. Yeah. Um, but, you know, actually, I take it back. It's accounting. I work at an accounting firm. Got it. Just so I'm say a receptionist. It. <laughs> just say it. Right. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Don't even bleep the name. Pete, if you're hearing this, I throw out your mug. Hey, yo, Pete. <laughs> Pete, you better fucking listen up because your mug is gone, baby. <laughs> We're at confessional right now. Yeah. I work the front desk and I'm like responsible for cleaning up the kitchen area. Mm. That's like the long and short of it. Okay. Sorry, I thought there was going to be more. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> and basically, that's it. So you saw the mug, and why did why did you throw it away? Because I feel like y you've got to be like, this has to be Pete's mug. Did you know it was Pete's mug when you threw it away? So the important context. Mm. We use like all paper cups and plates in my office. Wasteful kings. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I know. I hate it. We don't have a dishwasher. Mm. Um, but... With that being said, I've literally never seen a regular mug in my office ever. You're like, in my life, I've like, never seen I've it. I've never seen like. it. I was raised in captivity. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, I, okay, so I'm in, I go into the kitchen. There's this mug next to the sink filled with dirty water. And here's like the big thing mm. that makes me think like, you know what? Maybe I'm not the villain in this story. Okay. Mm. The mug had a, like a dime sized ship in the lip of it. And oh. not like on the bottom, in the lip of it, where you're drinking from. Oh, so I'm like, dude. Okay. Weird, yeah. gross, mm -hmm. filled with dirty water, whatever. Well, and and to be clear, just and and just to clarify, it was in the sink, right? So it being dirty water is sort of like normal for it to have on the counter next to the sink. Uh, okay, well, I think we're splitting hairs. <laughs> Two and a half <laughs> inches away from Two and the half sink. Inches away from the sink. Within we do have to address. I called it petty and insignificant in the voicemail. I know this. <laughs> I'm loving this and so much. We are much. here for it, Clarissa. This is like the office politics that you get into when you're bored. Yeah. Anyway, I, I leave it. It's there for like days, whatever. Um, in a few days, I come back. It's no longer there. I'm like, great, whatever. I go to restock plates in a cabinet, and now it's there. And I'm like, what the fuck is this doing here? All that's kept in this cabinet is the paper plates. You know what? The more I talk, the less this matters. No, yeah, no, 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 no. This is I getting disagree. more and more important. This is getting hot. And honestly, I'm getting more and more on your side. <laughs> and I'm ready to burn your office down for all I care. Who's Pete? Who okay, is Pete? <laughs> we want Pete's head on a paper plate. Can you tell us about Pete? Is Pete someone, is Pete like um, a petty little bitch that's like, <laughs> where'd my mug go? Like, is he, are they just saying this to like, um, you know, get under your skin and be like, I know this happened. Did you just do this? Cause, and I'm just asking, cause I know you did it. Oh, well backtrack a little bit. I end up throwing out the mug. There mm -hmm. is a witness there. And I vocally say this mug has been here for like a week. I'm throwing it out. It has a chip. Like you I have a dialogue it. with yeah. her and you then I throw it out. You were on the PA system at that point saying, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm doing this yeah. because this, you weren't trying to hide it. You weren't trying to hide it at first, but you didn't know you did anything wrong. Exactly. A few days later, it's like as soon as I get into work, like 828 on the dot. Uh, that's not that early. But for me, I slept badly. I was like, damn, I'm I'm so tired. And he comes up to my desk. He's like, hey, I like a, a mug. Like, like, have you seen it around? And I'm just going to say he was being so nice about it. I am. I'm. I'm the villain of the story. I, no, I don't think I'm you pretty are. sure I'm the villain in the story. I don't think you no. are. I'm like a criminal. Yeah, a yeah. villain? No. That's right. You're a criminal, but you're not a villain. Okay, people get prosecuted for stuff in this country all the time that Truly, they don't deserve. You, yeah, no, this is this is perfect. Yeah, I'm serving 20 to life for stealing and throwing away a mug. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm just like, immediately I lie. I'm just like, yeah, I saw it with like some dirty water in it on the counter. I haven't seen it since then. I don't really know what, you know, sometimes the cleaners take stuff. 
Yeah. You're right. Sure. Leave, like, I just wouldn't recommend leaving stuff on the counter at all. So are you blamed the help? <laughs> sometimes the cleaners, <laughs> sometimes the cleaners <laughs> take stuff. That is fucking crazy. It's me. <laughs> and it was this is White Lotus. It's, it is all my fault. That's right. Um. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just like, yeah, no, whatever. Have a dialogue with him. The kind of problem is the person who saw me is an admin in, in his department. Oh. So I have, and she's like pretty no bullshit. There is a very good chance he came up fully knowing I threw out the mug. That's my gut feeling. Yeah, my gut feeling is that he knows that you did it and he's trying to, he's trying to force a confession. But if you know anything about the law, you can't force a confession. I didn't know that. I don't know. Law and order. <laughs> but I will also say, was it was this a mug that he brought from home? Or is this a mug that's like, it was at the office and he used it so much that he's like, that's my mug. It's a mug that he brought from home. Again, the big thing in it is the chip on the lip of the mug. That's the only like piece of evidence for the prosecution, if, yeah. or maybe if I'm the defendant. Yeah. But okay. I... I really just think the chip in the lip of the mug. Chip in the lip of the mug. The chip in the lip of the mug. Uh. I'm starring in Hamilton with this. Well, yeah, it's Hamilton style. But what what is on the mug? What is the design of the mug? It was like uh, like a 5K. It was like a 5K thing. Like 5K from 2019, blur, whatever. Was it a fundraiser? Was, was it, a, it to it was raise a, money for something It was specific. a raise money for a fundraiser for um, his grandma who died. And you threw it away. <laughs> Um, do you have any recollection of maybe what the 5k was for? I yeah. think this might be, this might be really relevant. <laughs> it was for him doing something. I think it was just like a very generic one in our city. <laughs> okay. 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 That's this, good. This sounds solvable. What if, do you know anything about Pete's personality? Any fun hobbies or like mm. interests? I'm here. You know what? I'm just going to lay it out there. I think he's a bit of a go-getter. I think he sucks up to the partners more than I think he should. The truth comes out. Maybe do I think that like he was bringing in the mug for attention? Do I think that? Maybe a little bit. A little? He's saying, look at this 5K I did. <laughs> yeah, look at this 5K I did. And everyone else is drinking out of fucking paper cups. <laughs> and here I ran a 5K. I think he wanted to walk around the office with a mug and be like, oh my gosh, mm. nobody walks around the office with a mug. <laughs> also, there's a chip in the lip. So I don't know really what point he was trying to get across, but it wasn't working. If anything, he made himself look like an idiot and yeah. then left it outside. What if you, I was thinking more personality, like any hobbies, because what if you got him a mug mm. that, you know, is let's say he likes law and order. You get mm. him a law and order mug right? and you put a note in it and you say, Pete, I did it. Yeah, I, I did it. I fucked up and I was put <gasps> under pressure and I lied. You're confessing? <gasps> I say it. I, I, wow. But then he gets a mug that's like personalized and you guys can laugh about it and be like, ha, ha, ha. And, and maybe put a, with a hammer and a little, um, <laughs> like a little something to like put on the edge of the lip. And it could be an activity where he puts mm. a chip in the lip. Yeah, puts the chip in the lip so that we reminds him of the mug that he lost. Yeah. I like that, Courtney. I think that's really <laughs> good. It's sort of staring right down the barrel and saying, you know what? I fucking did that shit. And I'm I, about did to it, give, I did and it. And I know it was wrong and it's yeah. been stewing inside of me. Yeah, this will alleviate the burden of you. Now, the other way that you can approach this is by Quit. Quit quitting your job. your job and moving to Mexico. <laughs> no, by making sure that the witness is on your team. Yes. And I think there's a couple different ways you can do this. <gasps> oh, yeah. But I think that going up to the witness and giving her a special mug or a little Debbie cake or something uh -huh. and being like, hey, I need you to be <laughs> on my side. I I need oatmeal her. cream pie. Okay. She loves oatmeal cream pie. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to bring her in a new mug for her and say, hey, you remember when I threw out that mug? Shh, mum's the word. And you pass her the little thing. You say, there's a lot more where that came from. If you do not say a word of this to Pete. This is kind of the question that I was looking for, which yeah. is like, do I make reparations, you know, as, as a one percenter should, mm. or do I cover my tracks entirely by just never bringing it up and kind of deal with the fact that at any point somebody could just walk up to my desk and talk about it. You know what I mean? Considering you called into a podcast to talk about it, you don't really strike me as someone mm. that this is going to sit well at all. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to sit You're gonna, well. It's going to start going into your dreams. <laughs> yeah, it's going to stew. It's going to stew for you. Now, I do also think, okay. though, to me, I'm a little worried that Pete, who you said was a department head, 
is going to use this situation as your downfall. Because you said you mm. you work reception. You're sort of doing office management stuff. You're Pete's, basically HR. You're basically HR. To me, Pete seems like he might use this as an opportunity <laughs> mm-hmm. to take you down. Now, if he doesn't know, he can't like retaliate against you. No, he's going to do someone's going to go into his office and he's going to be like, oh, did you come in through the front? And be like, yeah. Oh, you saw the girl. You saw Clarissa, the receptionist. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm like, sorry about her. She's crazy. Yeah. He's yeah. going to start doing things like that. Okay. I'm going to pitch something. Please. I have a soft pitch. Okay. What if, and I maybe just stir, this might stir the pot more. I don't know. Okay. I, you know, get a mug, bring it in, put a note on there. That is not handwritten. That is typed out because we can't have any evidence. <laughs> no okay. evidence. Pete, I threw away your mug. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And just leave it where the other mug was. Maybe fill it with dirty water. <laughs> and see what happens. I like the idea of getting or him is a that new mug. Too much of a mystery. No, 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 no. I think that's perfect. Because then you're going to sort of leave breadcrumbs for him and maybe yeah. you could frame someone else, but then it's up to his suspicions, right? Because yeah. you're never going to admit to the crime. But I think getting him a new mud and saying, "I sorry, I threw away your mug. Here's a new one, etc." It's sort of a 5K adjacent mug. I think that's not a bad idea at all. And I'm thinking you could honestly change office culture here where you say... Um, he, I stole your mug. Mm-hmm. If you think I'm the culprit, whoever you think the culprit is, steal something from them. And then I'm thinking, make it, mm-hmm. you know, now you've got real life mafia. Yeah. Who knows how long this will go? And it's just innocent <sighs> little things. I love that idea. I think that's a fantastic make idea. Make it a game. Literally. It's like yeah. Elf on a Shelf for adults. Like, it's just, it's, <laughs> we're having fun. Elf on a Shelf for adults is stealing a mug from work <laughs> and <laughs> leaving a <laughs> ransom note. Yeah, I think that's... <laughs> Award-winning advice from Courtney, and um, I think you're going to have to give us an update for how he sort of takes this news, for how the sort of mystery expands. But how are you feeling before we let you go? I mean, honestly, I feel great. Never did I expect a call back for my my stolen dirty water mug. So you know, I'm yeah. pretty pretty happy for this. Pretty grateful, Courtney Miles. Thank you very much. Love the pod. Mm. You know, and I'll leave you with this. Don't throw away other people's goods, even if they're full of dirty water and they're for multiple days. That's right, everyone. I think you can throw them away. I think that that's Yeah, fine. I think I would have done the same. <laughs> I think that's going to be fine. Clarissa, thank you so much for calling in and thanks for listening to the show. You have the most amazing day. Have fun. You too. Bye. 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 Wow. That was fun. Isn't that fun? And I kind of like these. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> Then, You're moving up to the headphones? Dare I say it? I like it. Oh my gosh. Maybe I start a podcast just so I can listen to myself. That's not, yeah. It's just you, you don't release it. It's just you going, hey, everybody, welcome to my crazy life. <laughs> <laughs> this morning? See, I can't do it. The minute, I guess, sorry. I, <laughs> you just got so uncomfortable. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> you know, it's, oh, I will say um, to those who are listening to the show, so we met at a wedding. Yes. And I have a very vivid memory of you oh, no. holding. <laughs> So my wife was very pregnant at the time and you jumping up and down, holding her belly going, <laughs> you guys are having a baby. And really made me laugh. Does your baby like to jump up and down? He does. Cause he of me. loves it. It's cause of Courtney. Cause I taught <laughs> and you taught him that. <laughs> and who taught him to love to jump? Uh, yeah, I love weddings. I oh love, love. I love babies. I love a wedding. It's the most fun thing. <laughs> I mean, planet. imagine seeing someone pregnant I don't like I love babies I love like I love love seeing a pregnant woman at a wedding is a little bit overstimulating what else are you gonna do of course there's too much love around you. hello like what are you gonna do if not jump up and down and grab that belly <laughs> did your wife feel like a little bit like no, she, she, she loved it she was like it was really funny oh god my wife is still livid <laughs> And I, let's bring her in. Let's bring her out. Okay, we've <laughs> got to take another call here. Miles, I matched with my coworker on Tinder, and now I don't know what to do. Help. Hello. Hello. You called Perfect Person, and I'm here to call you back to find out about your Tinder match at work. Absolutely. Uh, let me just leave the building <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> I'm here with Courtney Parchman. Hello. And we are so excited hey for guys. Your, your at work romance and or maybe not because uh, it's going to get a little steamy yeah. at your office. What kind of job do you have as you're leaving the building? <laughs> are we stressing you out right now? Do you need to like, so, do you need a minute to like fully yeah. be in a safe spot? Do you need a minute? All right. Hold on. Okay. I just, I literally just left the building and I passed my boss who was walking into the building. I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, I work in marketing. Okay, cool. I feel like we're sort of doing almost a corporate episode. We just talked to someone from accounting and now we're talking to marketing. Sorry, you were sorry. Sorry, you mentioned the previous caller doesn't mean any different of how we think about you. You're not just like one in the middle. No, like you're not just one, a needle in a haystack. You're not just oh, like a no, number no. to me. No. I love you and I value you and I can't wait to talk about your problem. Well, I love you guys. Oh, but also, who else is on this call? This is Courtney Bartsman. I'm Courtney. At Average Fashion Blog. Oh, hi, Courtney. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't know who I am? Uh, sorry, next caller. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. And I don't want you to find out. <laughs> um, oh, I will be looking this up afterwards, but it's lovely to meet you. Okay, it's so, so basically, <laughs> I'm in my small little office, but then on the other side of the office is the graphics department. And there's this guy from the graphics department who's mm. also like maybe nine ish years older than me. They and we match. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And how old are you? I'm 24. Okay. 24. And he is. And he's like 33, which is like, I actually, I just finished watching your newest episode. And so I was like, oh my gosh. Oh yes. There was the a, a girl who called in and she was 23 and she was like, I'm looking for somebody under 30. It was like a dating episode. Yeah. And all of the boys on the thing were over 30. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, right. Well, no problem. <laughs> okay. um, I'm it, like, so. that's not me, but I respect that. No, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So you're 24 and, um, did you have a crush on, because I feel like this happens when you're a single person, you're on, you like see your friends and you're like, oh, well, I guess maybe I'll, like some people write swipe because they're like, oh, well, if we match as friends, that's kind of funny. Did yeah. you have a crush on this person before you matched? A little bit. Like I noticed him around the office and he had like a really sweet smile, but I'm also like, I'm like just dating, you know, I'm on the dating apps. I'm just like trying to see what's out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm also like, I, this is like my first big boy job out of college. And so it's like, I don't want it to get too messy, but I know he like, he wants me to stop by his desk and talk to him. And like, he does seem really sweet, mm -hmm. but I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Well, I find that specifically with like at work romances, a couple things have to be true in order for them to be able to get off the ground at all. Number one, they can't be like someone you have to see every single day. Is this person like, cause it, you know what I mean? Like if this is someone that no, sits I next don't see to him you, every day. So you could avoid him. It's, if yes, exactly. Went astray. Mm -hmm. The other thing is it can't be uh, too spicy and too uh, sort of filled with lust because then it ends badly. And it's sort of like, you have to see this person around that really wronged you. You know what I mean? You can kind of tell when someone's just like a vault. That's true. Do you think that this person who we have to give a fake name to uh, this guy and our caller, Courtney, could you give me two names, please? Leandra for you. Okay, Leandra for you. Leandro. For him. <laughs> and Leandro. Well, so Leandro, do you think that he would be a volatile lover? Listen, so I have some intel because I was looking at his social media. Yeah. Okay. And on his Instagram, it's like I can see the accounts he follows and he follows some like sort of spicy type accounts. And so I'm like, <laughs> how, I many? Don't know if how many? How many? What type of spicy? Like a like, lot, but also oh. there's a lot of variety, right? In like the types of women. <laughs> I guess that's good. But... What what types? Of, like, are they spicy? Like, are they porn stars or sex workers, or are they just sort of like attractive? I mean, people? yes. Okay. Yeah, I feel like a bunch. Like, yeah. How do you Sorry. feel about that? I sort yeah. of feel like that's weird, but it's I don't know. Weird. I'm also married. I. I think this is like going to change with whoever you're talking to. I feel like every guy, cause I was single for a while. And so I would go on their accounts and see who they're following. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like they always got like a four to five pass. Like there's four to five <laughs> thoughties <laughs> that they can follow. And I'm there's like, definitely more okay. than that. And like, like sometimes an it's amount? like particular influencers. Sometimes it's particular influencers, but sometimes it's just like, a page with just like a bunch of different suggestive photos from a bunch yeah. of different people on them. Yeah, I got like it. He's like being really respectful, but I'm like, you're on Instagram. Sorry, I don't know. Sorry. sorry, can you talk about how he's being respectful? He's commenting on every photo, looking good, queen. <laughs> no. <laughs> what is he doing? no. Never seen Yonkers like that. He's not coming up to my desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's that's weird. what I mean. Like, yeah, he's okay. like. He's like a normal person. Yeah. Do you guys not realize like they're 
following is public. Oh yeah, and your likes are public. You're like, do uh, they not? Like, I genuinely do they not understand because it's like we can see I'm that. Like, you're, make a do f- I tell this man? No, <laughs> yeah, probably maybe, not. I would say like only if you're dating, being like, hey, this is. Can you unfollow these people? I think it's. I don't know. It's so because I do think mm. that there's something weird about it. No, there is. I don't know. There's to me. It's also like. I don't know if this guy was like, yeah, he's looking at, uh, you know, sexy butt pics on Instagram. Hey, you know, go for it. There's yeah. something about a follow yeah. that is so weird to me. Like I need to see well, every time this posts, I yeah. need to be alerted about yeah, this yeah, butt yeah. pic or whatever. Yeah. Um, I will say though, I went, I am seeing a guy, oh, we're dating. <laughs> what am I saying? Oh my God. Um, but yay. <laughs> Um, but before I like went through his following, he was, da- he was following no spicy girls. And I no. was like, not one, come on. You don't want to see one tip pick on your following. But, like, <laughs> come on. So I really do think like four to five is like a healthy number. That's right. If they're, if you know, every time they open up Instagram app, they're being fed at least three pictures with a two scroll mm. thing. That's a lot. Yeah. I think that that's, oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. If you open his feed, yeah. what is he being, what's the algorithm being like, you're going to engage with this the most. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't bode well, but uh, you're what do you like? you her problem at all. No, 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 no. Just... What do you like about this guy? Well, okay. So one of the bigger problems I'm having right now is I had my three month review and my boss is like sort of like a chill dude. And so we were talking about how to integrate me better into the company because I'm one of the youngest people here. Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking more for friends than anything else. Oh, but yeah. like now I feel like there's this like sort of flirty expectation started and I, oh, I like okay. want to get to know this dude and yeah. I like, it's fun to have a little flirt at work, but I'm also just trying to make buddies at work. Oh, then I think that you need to, I mean, first of all, nothing is expected of you to anybody you work with, but also I think it's like when IRL people match with you on Tinder, that also is not a promise or an expectation. It is, could just be like a fun flirty, whatever. And like, you could even be like, like maybe a way to squash the feeling of expectation that you like sort of are perceiving to have just going up to him being like, Oh, by the way, saw we matched on Tinder, like whatever. Yeah. I just thought it was funny to see you on there. You know what I mean? Cause I think maybe hiding it is yeah. more odd, but you could also just not even address it at all. Cool as a cucumber. Um, I matched with a guy from my gym one time and I was like in my head about it because I matched with him. I messaged him and I said something crazy that I wouldn't normally say. I was like, I can't believe my gym crush is on hinge. And then, <laughs> yeah. And he didn't respond. And then like five days later changed his picture. So I know he was like active on the app. And then I saw him <laughs> frequently and I finally went and talked to him. because I like was like, freaking out every time yeah. he came in and I like, just was like laughing. He was like, Oh my God. He was like, it's not like, I just like think you're cute, but like, it's not. And I was like, okay. And then like now, every time I see him, we like have real banter. Like we talk and we're friends, but there is no like date. Uh, there, like, no, there's nothing there. So I do think to relieve some pressure, um, maybe on his end, he's not like building it in his head to be like, oh, I matched with her on this. That means like it's a hook, you know, like. Yeah, right. Well, first of all, what did you say to the person at the gym that made them go, well, I think you're cute, but I'm not trying to. Uh, I like I can't remember. I was like he I saw him and every time I would see him, I would like start laughing because I like was so nervous oh. and then I like couldn't get anything out. And then he was kind of like calling. He was like, you're fine. Like, I just think you're cute. Like, it's not like we're going to do anything. And I was like, OK. <laughs> Or not, we're gonna. I think it was like nothing's coming, like you're fine. Yeah, right, right, right. I was like, on show. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But maybe it's hard to know what the expectation is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, like, an at work flirt is like super fun. Like, that's fun to have in your sort of back pocket. But I get what you mean, where you're not trying to like have your at work flirt have him be like, well, so we should get drinks after. Like, you want it to just sort of be a fun, carefree thing that you are maybe able to flirt at work, but it doesn't have to like have an expectation. Yeah. Yes. Does correct. your company have, um, like, do they all ever do parties for like holidays or like a summer thing where you guys all get together and hang out? Okay. Yes. And we have this thing mm. every month and it's called cake day and we collectively celebrate everyone's birthday oh, so once cute. a month. That's cute. Man, and so we all America. get together in the, <laughs> no, in the boss, it's actually really chill, but the boss will like announce all the names and then we all clap and then we eat cake. Do you have a drink or two when you're doing it? Do you drink? No, this is like in the morning at like 9 a.m. So <laughs> we're having like cheese and crackers and cake. <laughs> oh yeah, have you not met at all? 
Oh, yeah. Like, I stopped by his desk yesterday and we chatted and I thought it went okay. It's just hard. I'm just nervous. I'm just like, I feel like a baby in the corporate world and I'm still trying to figure out social dynamics. So it's like funky. And he mentioned us going out for lunch. And I was just like, maybe. All the dating app match meant was that like you're acknowledging like, hey, I see you. You see me. Yeah. Go into the lunch and you can totally be like. It's just like a first date. Like you go into it being like, if anything, I'm going to go into this and just learn about this person. We'll be friends. Mm -hmm. If something more develops, like that is so separate than like what this lunch is. I wouldn't like go into this lunch. Like, Oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? Be like, I'm going to this lunch to meet a friend. If, if we end up creating deeper feelings, that'll happen Mm -hmm. on its own. But like, there's no pressure to make it happen at all. Completely. I also think that like, if you're dealing with smart, stable people, then the first step to being in, like if there was to be something romantic, you have to get through the friendship first date part and then it could just end there and you guys are just friends at work. That is really good advice. You guys are the perfect people. Thank you. You're kidding. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I was actually so nervous. I feel like this is like a real life thing. (laughs) We hold your fate in our hands. Like what if we got you fired? Honestly, typically my advice is don't date anyone from work because it's just so complicated. That being said, I think that people are at work so much, it's common for people to meet their partners at work, but you just have to know it is a Mm -hmm. surely stable thing before you were ever to pursue something like that. Like you have to become friends with this person like develop a dynamic and a banter and then if you think it's going to become romantic you're sort of making a more calculated decision instead of just jumping into someone and being like yeah whatever like and then it ends so bad and work sucks now uh also for work stuff i feel like there's always a grace period where the social dynamics suck and you're trying to like be sort of prim and proper and then eventually you're able to become yourself so i feel like that's common for any job if you're feeling awkward at work okay that's also reassuring so i appreciate that yeah that's how i was at uh try guys where the first six months or whatever i was just like trying to be sort of like yeah like i'm the best pa and i'll go get lunch for everybody and yeah and then i'm like no i am not mm-hmm. like that at all that's yeah nothing like my personality well thank you so much for mm-hmm. calling into the show you're gonna be just fine and uh yeah don't put pressure on thank yourself thank you so much yeah, yay yeah. miss leandra enjoy it thank you leandra shout out to oh, leandro thank you i love you guys <laughs> love we you. love you love you thanks for calling love in you. have a great day bye bye bye, bye. It's going to end so bad. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> She's getting fired. She's getting fucking fired. No, I feel like that's so common too. Like the, I have so many friends who are like, yeah, we matched, but then we like saw each other and it didn't feel romantic. Or yeah. Whatever. I think it is good to think about it. Like, it's like, yeah, like it's not a guarantee of anything. It just is sort of the next step. And everyone, it's just hard too, because everyone holds these dating apps so differently. Like some people only mm-hmm. match with like, people that they're, I don't, you know. Yeah. They like, are like, I won't swipe right unless it's someone I really want to date. Yeah. So then then that means so much more where some people are like literally not even looking and like watching TV and like swiping. Yeah, exactly. Man. Yeah. I did not enjoy dating apps. No, absolutely not. And me and my wife met at a party. We just met randomly at a party. Yeah. In the wild. We just met uh, by the snack table. The guy I'm dating right now, he got set up on a blind date and I'm oh, that's fun. so grateful that I don't have to say it's from an app. No, that is nice. It's yeah. also a blind date's great because it is vouched. Like you're both vouched for by oh, someone. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, Courtney, we have one final call here. So um, I have a figure skating nemesis and I need advice on how to be more unapproachable. Thank you. Bye-bye. I obviously have a lot of experience with this because when I was a child, I spent a lot of time at the ice skating (laughs) On the ring? Seeing about the dynamics of culture. Me and my three male friends uh, would go almost like, there was a period of several months where we would go twice a week to the ice skating ring. Oh, wow. And we were like, so this weekend, skates up, right? Like we were just like probably freshmen in high school and we would go and my parents would drive us or whatever and we'd just like, skate around. And would you guys fun. be near the ones that are like getting trained for competitions? Yeah, in the middle of the skating ring, those are the people that are doing like figure skating and they're doing all these tricks and we're just sort of like <laughs> going around the side <laughs> and like, who do you guys like at school? Yeah, That's the best. really fun. I love an ice skating ring. Hello? Hello! You called perfect person and I'm here to call you back <sighs> to make sure that your nemesis who's a figure skater goes down and I'm here with Courtney Parchman. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, great to meet you. Um, no way. <laughs> we're going to need a fake name for you, Courtney. Mary. Mary. Okay. Is that your real name? Is that your real name? Because oh. then we're going to have to change it. That is not. 
Okay, good. It is not. Mary, why don't you tell me about all about your figure skating and your nemesis and how you want to be more unapproachable? Can I change your name to Tanya? Tanya? It has got to be Tanya. Mary is forgotten and gone. Tanya Harding. That is very ironic, and I can't explain why, because it would give away where I'm skating at. But anyway, <laughs> um, can I have a fake name for the nemesis? The nemesis? So you're Tanya. Who's, who's the, oh, who's the other name? girl? Was it Nancy? It was Nancy. Okay. Tanya and Nancy. Tanya and Nancy. Okay, so Nancy's your nemesis. You're Tanya. Tell us what's going down, girl. Um, to start off with, I am an adult. I'm not like a prodigy child <laughs> skater, or else okay. I wouldn't be calling it. Copy that. So and you're taking is adult a, yeah. skating classes. Yeah. So basically, there is like a huge community of adult figure skaters. Um, especially after the pandemic, a lot of people started to learn adult figure skating. Um, and I am one of them. And my nemesis, Nancy, is another one. And we are of similar ages. That's so cool that you joined that. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm really happy that I started. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so basically, the rink that I'm at is very small. And everyone who takes classes there, we all like interact with each other. And we see each other at the rink often. Mm. And so how this started was that I took like a big hiatus of skating. And then I came back. And, um, because I was gone for so long, there were a lot of new people that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I was like out skating one day, working on some smaller jumps, little hops. <laughs> you're sort of hopping around. <laughs> yeah. You're just practicing. When you practice a hop, you're sort I of like, am hopping uh? around. <laughs> I just have to practice. Exactly. But, yeah, of course. So I'm hopping around <laughs> and I'm doing my best. Okay, yeah. I am just trying to get off the ground mm -hmm. because I'm an adult, and if I fall, there is major implications. <laughs> yeah. You know, sure. <laughs> um, I'm so impressed by you. Before we get into the problem, that <laughs> yeah. I think people don't put themselves out there to even take do these activities, and I think that's awesome. It is really cool. I, by the way, I'm a big. I think you should have a bunch of different types of hobbies, and people should learn new stuff. This is very cool. Shout out to anyone listening. Please go chase any childhood dream that you have. <laughs> Follow your dreams. <laughs> Follow your dreams. But so anyways, I'm out there and this was about six months ago when it first started. So I'm out there just like hopping around and Nancy is also out there and um, I'm just kind of doing my thing. And then all of a sudden Nancy comes up to me and says, oh, you know, to do a waltz jump, your leg has to go higher. Okay. And I stopped in my tracks and I was like, oh, um, yeah, I know that but thank you and it was like so off-handed i was like okay whatever like she's just trying to be nice you know uh -huh. so i like continue on and then later i'm doing something else and once again nancy comes over to me mm -mm. and says oh like oh you're doing that move what level are you in and i was like oh i'm in level five and she's like oh kind of a little early to be trying to do that don't you think oh and I was why like, is she oh so God. worried about your shit fuck off nancy you are on my shit list how high is nancy jumping yeah literally how high <laughs> how how high tell me right now tell me right now what brand are her shoes how high is she jumping yeah. how often is she showing up uh -huh. she, is she gonna take a hiatus and come back yeah because she's not doing the work sorry i'm right man <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay so Yes. So, like, to be fair to Nancy, Nancy is very good at jumping. Um, okay. okay. Well, well, some people, I don't even care. Yeah. That's embarrassing at that so point. It might not even be that Nancy's putting in extra effort. Nancy just has longer legs, so it looks better. Yeah. You know? She, yeah, some of us don't have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's like Nastia Luke and Luke, uh, Luke Nastia <laughs> versus Sean Johnson. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like. Yeah. That girl had to be putting 10 times in the work. That's right. She to get her know. leg up that high. So yeah, Nancy's good at jumping. I'm much better at spinning. Nancy can't spin <laughs> some shit. <laughs> Did you hear that, Nancy? You hear that, bitch? I'm better at spinning. Even though you have jumping, <laughs> that's on a resume, better at jumping. Literally. And what's going to get you farther in like jumping or spinning? Yeah, I agree. So like essentially after that second comment, I started like, talking back a little bit and I was like oh you know it doesn't really matter Tanya. what level you're in you can practice whatever you want to and Tanya or uh, Nancy's like oh well you know I think you should really respect the curriculum here because like there's a you know what do you call it order for a reason <laughs> oh and I was God. like nah -uh, man 
<laughs> she scared I, you. I skated around a little more after that, and then I just left because I'm like, the vibe is wrong here today. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. So it sounds like she's threatened by you. Yeah. And also, how old are you and how old do you <clears throat> think that Nancy is? Gosh, so I'm 24. Okay. And uh, Nancy's definitely... Um, younger than 30, mm-hmm. but older than 22. Oh, so she's like around the um, same age as you. Yeah. And also around the same level. Cause I go to the mm. classes and like, she's in a similar level. And the thing about Nancy is she's a hypocrite because she practices stuff outside of her level all the time. Oh, <laughs> uh, Nancy is <laughs> fucking wow. That is so to be hypocritical like, on the ice like that. And so she's mad because you're practicing. She said to respect the curriculum. What is she even? This is crazy. This yeah. is crazy. Nancy's a crazy person. Well, I think like, yes. just off the bat, obviously you're a happier person. You would never be going around critiquing. You would say, hey, that's a really good jump. Yeah. Hey. Um, Supportive. If anything, yeah. you would say like, I noticed that like when I do this, my jumps are higher. Mm-hmm. And then like maybe mm-hmm. guide them. You would never yeah. say, oh, your spins are shit. Yeah, you would never say, oh, w- oh, you're practicing that? You shouldn't be. That's so rude. Yeah. So uh, so how did this interaction end? She's sort of like noting you and then she says we should respect the curriculum and then she just, what, skates away? <laughs> so, it, you know, the interaction ended at a normal spot and so we both skate away. <laughs> and then after that, I just kind of decided to leave yeah. because I'm also yeah, like self-conscious and if I know that someone's watching me, yeah. <sighs> I like can't skate for shit, you yeah, know. No. Do you guys have? There's like pressure. Do you have mutual? Like, is there? Is there mutual friends? Is there more? Yeah. Of an exterior thing that could be coming into why she's so mean. Yeah, maybe bully? she. Yeah, mm-hmm. is, she, is she being like a bully? Like, do you know anything about her backstory? Does she have a tragic home life? I believe that there is probably some of that, and I don't want to say why because it okay. could give away. In okay. case that Understandable. she listens, but if she did listen, she would definitely know this is her. But um, <laughs> well, she should know that what she's doing is insane. Yeah, I mean, I think you probably yeah. like to me. You need to sort of check her in a way where it's going to stop her from being mean mm-hmm. to you, but also in a way where you're not going to have to be worried about confronting this person every time you skate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you almost so, yeah, just want to be like, like, oh, like mm-hmm. if I wanted, like almost like a fun little like thing you could say. <laughs> Because you know, you go, oh, if I wanted your feedback, I'd ask for it. Oh. And then you sort of, you spin. Oh, that is great. And then you yeah. spin away because that's something she can't do as good as exactly. you. Exactly. Or you could say, Nancy, you're so good. I hope I can be like you one day. And then scuff. What the hell are you going to say to that? Yeah. What is she going to be like? Eh, well, you suck. Like, yeah. she's probably not going to be that. But make cool. sure you say it in like a condescending way mm. where like, clearly you don't mean it. Mm-hmm. Like, Nancy, oh my God, you're so good. I just hope I can be like you one day. And then watch her jump up and be like, God, those jumps. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> what a jump. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. stuff like Ooh, that. Oh, I just hope, hope, hope I can be level six like you one day. Oh, I hope, I, oh, I hope. Oh. Ski off. Yeah, get on your knees. <laughs> oh, I'm praying to really be like you one day. And then Nancy's like, what is she going to say to that? You could also try crying. That also would help. Oh, yeah. I think that you Oh, no. Good. Yeah. If you weep on the ice, your yeah. tears freezing underneath you, then I think that she probably wouldn't be come in, anymore. Come in like a legit <laughs> skating outfit. <laughs> like, <laughs> By the way, yeah. full oh, out <laughs> skating outfit and like turn on your music on a beat pill that you have strapped to your back and do your full routine. Oh, What's my she gonna, God. What is she going to say to that? She's like to show your brilliance on the ice. Like she's going to be intimidated by that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like my original question was how to be less approachable <laughs> oh, also. Yeah. Sorry. Because I think that I just look like someone who's so approachable that it invites comments. Yeah. So how can I look mean? <laughs> or like should I wear a t-shirt that says I'm not here to make friends? Honestly, that is funny. <laughs> uh, that is really funny. I think also like you don't do you, like to me if Nancy said something to you and you totally like did not respond or look at her, that would probably make her feel pretty small. Mm, yeah. I just want to be that dog on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> you also just like don't want to look like you're pissed because you don't want to be like uninviting for other people. Yeah, like kind skaters might be like, yeah. oh my God, that was so cool. Like you want to be, you know, uh, having fun with those people. Is there anyone else that you can potentially create yeah. a friendship with in the group? Because I'm intimidated when people like have friends around them. Yeah, groups are scary. You, yeah. She wouldn't That's say, true. if you were had a friend next to you, she wouldn't say anything mean to you. No. No. My friend is a very good skater, and so 
I've tried like having my friend on the ice and then I pretend like I'm coaching my friend, which makes me look really good. <laughs> Wait, I'm obsessed with this. This is so fun. That's so are you in Are you by any chance in the city of angels? Cause I want to join. <laughs> No, but there's definitely a lot of skating there. <laughs> I know that. I've okay. heard there's a skate a, a oh. place in Burbank that you can go ice skating. My goodness. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, I okay, think that having, having yeah. a friend, I think in terms of being more unapproachable, like um, I think that it's just really about how you respond to the comments. Like you being like, oh, like this, mm -hmm. like you're sort of almost feeding into her game. Her being like, oh, well, like this is the level or whatever. And you responding genuinely being like, well, I want to be able to practice what I want. That's almost giving her too much. Yeah. You know, it's giving her too much power over yeah. you that she could like elicit this upset response from you. So I think kind of what you got to do mm -hmm. is next time she gives you like an annoying note, just be like, yeah, I like, I don't need your feedback or like, yeah. Okay, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Nancy. And roll your eyes. <laughs> all rude. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Also, I got fake eyelashes and a spray tan, and then people think I'm a bitch now. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Have you noticed that for people they think you're rude? Yes, because I get like nervous, and so like sometimes in social settings I'll get like quiet, and in the past people be like, "Oh, I didn't like," because um, I'm like kind of loud online, and people are like, "Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. realize you were so shy mm -hmm. and stuff." And it's always been shy lately. People are throwing the b word around, thinking I'm a bitch. People said that about you? No. And did you hear about them saying that or did they say it to you? Through the grapevine. That's fucked people are up. Saying, people are saying, oh, this person doesn't think you're very nice because like, and then they'll say the instance and I'm like, that's insane. Like I was nervous. So I just like wasn't talking that much. Yeah. But I guess like my face reads. So no. maybe try getting a pair of fake eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. just a pair of fake eyelashes away from solving all of my problems. From looking like a bitch. Yeah. Honestly, fake eyelashes and spray tan is going to be our final diagnosis for you. <laughs> that is going to be what oh we're prescribing. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's full skating you outfit. again, tell them that they can't spin for shit. Yeah. yeah. You can't spin for shit. Yeah. I think that that's got to be what you got to do. I do think full out skating outfits, spray tan and eyelashes <laughs> is going to be solving your problem for you. Uh, Tanya, thank you so much for calling in. All right. Tanya, we love you. I think I really yes. do think oh you're gosh. so awesome for joining this community of skaters. It is that's very so cool. fun. Oh, I'm so happy to talk to you guys. Miles, I love your podcast. You give oh, big brother you. energy. Oh. <laughs> That's very sweet of you. Thank you for listening to the show. Awesome. You guys have a great day. Bye, right. Tanya. Take it easy. Bye-bye, Tanya. Wow. Yeah. That was incredible. It really painted yeah. a world for me. Yeah. I mean, on top of the... I, I lost 90 pounds, uh, but I couldn't <laughs> can't tell someone. I, you know, I don't know what she looks like. Right, sure. <laughs> it would be yeah. worse if I did know what she looks like. And then I'm like, oh, and like so. also, you need to lose People think pounds. you're a bitch if you're skinny. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's so funny. Uh, well, we have fun final segment, and it's a segment we like to call Get Real. Oh, God. Uh, this is a segment where we force a genuine moment in an effort to learn more about each other and ourselves. Oh, my God. Thank you for being here, Courtney. Thank you for having me. People call you Corny, right? Corn, Corny. Is that a typical nickname? Does anyone call you Courtney? Uh, yeah, I have some random friends. And then typically um, when I'm romantic with someone, they'll call me Courtney. By your official name. Courtney doesn't hit as hard in that setting. Romantically. Yeah. Yeah. Come here, Courtney. Yeah. Corn dog. Yeah. <laughs> I love corn dog as a romantic pet name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, you're obviously very funny online. Uh, and I was wondering with this type of career, it's very weird. We were kind of talking about the highs and lows and like the weird waves and stuff like that. How do you, and something I struggle with all the time is like staying motivated week to week and not letting the numbers dictate my mood or how I'm feeling about my own stuff that I'm making. Yeah. How do you fare with that kind of stuff? And is it really hard in an industry where it's like almost relying on you to just be charming and relaxed how do you force that in times when you're not feeling like that you know it's that's 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 a, qu a good question and i think that's almost maybe one of the biggest questions we have in this industry how do you keep going yeah how do you keep going how do you depend on who you are as a person when that fluctuates you know uh, maybe you're sad for some time sure how do you get online and say i'm gonna make something or silly and goofy yeah so um i've resorted now i've been online for about seven to eight, um, nine years sure. been online. And I've resorted to looking into school, looking into other options. 
realizing I don't know if this is for me. <laughs> because how hard can you push? How much can you depend on who you are? You could become an electrician. <laughs> I don't know. I thought about opening a bakery. Um, First of all, that sounds great. It sounds really, a bakery really fun. sounds really I'm good. Still, it's not out of. It's my dream to open a coffee shop. Genuinely. Yeah. The problem is with opening a coffee shop, it's just like not that profitable. So you kind of yeah, need to have money to have it. Yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. Um, genuinely. Yeah, please. I don't want to stay on social media. I yeah. find it really hard. I think it's like it's so hard. But well, by the way, to clarify, because obviously we're like, oh my god, that sounds so well, no, 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 no. Sounds so, well, I'll, so I'll, st I'll stop you right there because I know that we probably feel the same exact way. It is hard only in that it is emotionally taxing to release stuff and ha hope that people like you. It is obviously we're very lucky to have this job. Oh my god, caveat, oh my god. caveat, oh my god. caveat, oh caveat. <laughs> Don't you dare clip that. The hard part about it is just unlike the hard part jobs. was that I wanted to kill myself for a year and kept having to make comedy exactly. and on top of that and yeah. um. Right. And then like, while I'm at it, people being like, you're not funny anymore. And then also yeah. like taking a hit um, in every category possible. Completely. While I'm still trying to like, literally like not want to die. Yes, So no, completely. Oh God, I don't like any of this because it just sounds like a sob story. It's not, well obviously, I wonder why it sounds like a sob story of playing the most <laughs> ridiculous music <laughs> possible. No, I think that it is unlike other stuff. It, it relies on like the thing that people, you grew people to like about you is like, oh, I'm charny, charmy, charny. I'm charny. <laughs> I'm charming and fun and like carefree and whatever. And then the second you don't feel that stuff, you have to force yeah. yourself to get back into the brand that, you know, even got you in the first place. Uh, for me, the way I get out of it is like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just like, don't really care for the numbers and like, yeah. you kind of can't, it's, you, know. you really can't. I'm just like, do I think this is funny? Do I stand by this? I think the funniest people are like the people that have like 12,000 followers mm -hmm. and like, they're super, super small. They haven't blown up yet. And they're just like making stuff that they think is good. And you can tell they're just doing it with like Joy. no expectation yeah. from anything. And then I also, after that really hard year, mm -hmm. I was like, you can quit. Like if you want Completely. to go back to school, you can do yeah. it. And then, I gave myself like four months of just being like, none of none of this is mandatory. And you're huge on TikTok, but I would imagine that relying on specifically TikTok is TikTok is so volatile and up and down. I and don't like, even really like post. Yeah. I just like yeah, totally. I'm tapped out. No. That's my advice. I don't know. I'm tapped out. I'm trying to figure it out too. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's a it's a hard thing. And also it's like, yeah, like you can have a big following, post one that gets, you know, several million views, post another one and it gets ten thousand views, and you're like what is happening? Like, how yeah. can I, you know, possibly try to stabilize myself when it's all so unpredictable? Well, also I started when I was 20 and like my whole brand was being like a piece of shit. Like I was like, <laughs> had none of my life together. And I, that was genuine. And I like yeah. would make jokes and lied about it, but now I'm 28 and like, I'm just different. Like I like yeah. having my shit together and it still isn't like by any means, but also like, it's just not like funny to me anymore to keep mm -hmm. dogging on that. And um, I just like grew up. And yeah, so, totally. and uh, you're not a value, or not a value, but like uh, the my humor is just different than when I was 20. Completely. Um, so now I am like doing more scripted stuff and I'm writing a show. And that's what really, it's like the same character that people like followed me for yeah. a couple years ago. No, I think that's something exciting. It's also like you have to find the next iteration of what you're doing that doesn't make you feel like you're uh, still doing it from when you were 20. You know, like- Yes, yeah, like yeah. you're evolving and my audience has evolved too. Like yeah, they're eight years older. as well. They're eight years older too. They're not going to think this shit that I was doing at 20 probably is funny now. Yeah, completely. Um, but I think getting more descriptive and writing and then- I booked a show, which was cool. And then, Let's go. Ah, and so hopefully getting to do more traditional media. Another part of it that's really embarrassing part of it is that it gives you a lot of time mm -hmm. um, to think about everything, but also like, why don't these people like me? Do these people like me in your personal and online life? Completely. Which um, it's like, in my opinion, it's embarrassing. It's like, get busy and fill your days with stuff that's thinking about anything but yourself, girl. Yeah. And like the minute I did that, I was like, oh my God, I was literally just stuck in a tunnel of yeah, like- Yeah, completely. Which I think social media can do because it's literally all about yourself. Especially like there is a weird thing I find where it's like, oh, this person follows me or like, 
I don't know. There's a want to be in the cool crowd of uh, various social media people. Yeah. Um, or like with this podcast, sometimes like it's like, oh, like I want to like, I don't know. There's oh, it's also it, I'm sure it exists for people that are uh, below you in the social media journey and above you. Like it never kind of goes away. It's just the feeling of wanting to feel popular or wanting to feel like everyone likes you. I think that yeah. never really goes away. And just trying to find it. Yeah. Like stay busy with other stuff. Trying yeah. to think about yourself is probably the solution. Yeah. All of it's just such a bizarre. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> Literally for what? Like, <laughs> yeah. this is all, it's so stupid. Well, no, that's how I feel too, where it's, it's also silly. Like how could anyone have an ego about this kind of thing? We make dumb videos online. Dumb, yeah. It's totally, you know. I hope in a year I can be like, I love it. It's such a great outlook, a yeah. great like way to get out these things. But in this moment, I'm like frustrated with it. No, I don't I blame you. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I'm spiraling <laughs> ever since we ever said- Ever since the pre-workout, you have to do stand-up. I can't. You'd be so good. I can't. My brain <laughs> convinces me every time I can't do stand-up because if I stand in front of a crowd, my brain goes, don't call everyone a fat fucking pig. And I'm like, well, that's crazy. I was never going to do that. But now that I'm on, now that there's pressure on me, I swear to God, it's going to slip out of my lips. <laughs> what if I say that? What if, you what say if I say fat thing? fucking pig? What if I call everyone a fat the fucking pig? The clip will pig? go viral and your career will skyrocket. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. Uh, yeah, I guess you don't. But hey, maybe that's why people come to your shows. Because it's like, who knows what's even going to I'm just as so surprised when it comes out too. I can't believe I just said all of that. <laughs> Courtney, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I really had so much fun. Oh, really? Thank you Maybe I'll that. do more podcasts. Oh, you should. Um, at Average Fashion Blogger, people can follow you for your very funny videos. If you're out there and you have a problem and you're not sure quite how to solve it, just remember that no matter where you are, who you are, perfection is only a call away. That was a HeadGum Podcast.